Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, so recently I needed to get some textures off of uh, Polyhaven and bring them into Houdini for rendering with Karma. And I ran into a couple little snags, so I just wanted to make a, a video just kind of showing how it works real quick. Um, so we're going to be uh, just applying a texture to the, uh, the pig uh, test geometry here. So you can kind of see. It's nice because we get the uh, displacement and whatnot. Okay, so... Uh, if all you're looking for is the node diagram, here it is. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go over to uh, Polyhaven. And really great website if you don't know it. You can get uh, HDRIs here and textures and even models. Uh, but we're going to be looking at textures. So I'm going to scroll down. I happen to like this one, the rock boulder crack texture. So I'm going to download that. So I'll hit save. So that'll download. Let's open that up. And it's it's nice. It actually gives you a Blender file and a, a GLTF file and a Ben file and all that stuff. All we really care about is the uh, the textures. Uh, so I'm just going to extract the textures into my downloads folder. So here they are. Cool. All right. So now we've got that. Let's pop back over to Houdini and start a new project here. Okay, so um, I'm starting over here in the object context because that's where I, I do most of my, my work. And I'm going to add a LOP network. Uh, you can do this through the, uh, the stage context. You can also go up to the uh, Solaris workspace. Any which way it works. I just like not having to switch my top level context because I kind of think it's a pain. So here in my LOP net, um, we're going to just set up some basic stuff, right? So we're going to do a soft create. Obviously, you can get your, your models and geometry in any which way you want. But I'm going to do a pig. Uh, I'm going to do the difficulty to hard. Um, go up. And then so we made this thing. And I'm just going to call it a pig so that it's easier to, or, you know, just housekeeping. Uh, the next thing we're going to need is a uh, material library and then I'm gonna want I'm gonna want a dome light uh, just cuz I'm gonna want to actually see this thing in render so might as well get it and then lastly I'm gonna put in a karma node so uh, that, that we can have our rendering uh, one thing I like to do XPU has come along nicely so for the rendering engine in here in the karma settings I'm gonna switch that over to XPU because it just runs way faster um, cool. So also to get into rendering, uh, this little tab up here where it says perspective, you might default into, uh, Houdini GL. That's like the, um, kind of your normal viewport sort of display, but I'm going to use the, the Karma version so you can see it kind of slows down, but it gives us the actual rendering. Cool. So I want to set that, uh, that dome light up real quick and nothing fancy here. I'm just going to go pick a, uh, HDR image that I've got. So use anything you want. I just think this is a, a easy way to uh, work with uh, lighting to get things going quickly. Cool. So it'll take a second, but you can see now we've got, we've got a scene and it's lighting our pickup, right? Cool. All right. So now onto the main thing. We want to actually set up a material. So I'm going to go into my material library here, double click it, dive into it. So you could uh, go about making your material in here directly, um, but I'm going to use a uh, USD Material X subnet. So that way, when we're in this context, um, when we search for things, they're all Material X things. Uh, that way you don't have to, uh, when you're searching for things, you don't have to tack on Material X to the beginning of your every search, which I found is annoying. The other thing that's nice about this is that it gives us a displacement output, whereas the, the normal uh, context just gives us a surface output. You can use a collect node to uh, get the displacement in there, but I think it's kind of a pain. Uh, cool. Rog on. So just to get things going, uh, by default, I'm going to take away that material surface, and I'm going to add a, a, a standard, uh, standard surface, which is this big old thing here. And I'm going to hook that up to our output. 
And I'm going to change the color to red just because I want to make sure that it connects to our pig and I can see it. Cool. So to actually, well, let's just call this a uh, pig skin. I'm going to drag this guy actually onto the viewport, onto the pig. And it's going to ask, do I just want to apply it just to the specific mesh or to the entire uh, component, which in this case is the pig. And I'm just going to say the pig. Uh, what that's done out here in our view is it's made this assigned material. So I'm going to put that right after the material library and go back into it. So, so now you can see we've got a texture. You know, it's a red thing. Really, all I'm looking to see with this is just to make sure that the uh, the texture or the sorry the material has actually been assigned, so that when we're working on it, we know what we got. Okay, so back into the. Uh, the surface what we need now to do is get those uh, those images in here right so I'm gonna search for an image and there are two of them we can bring in just an image or we can do a tiled image I think the tiled image is a little bit uh, more convenient because then we can uh, change kind of the scale of it on our, our model but you know depends on what you're doing if that's appropriate or not okay so we're gonna connect uh, this out to our base color which is going to immediately turn black because we haven't picked a file. So up here, I'm going to go to File, and then in our Downloads folder, we have those textures. So I'm going to find the right one here. So there are a bunch of them. Uh, so like AOs, Ambient Occlusion, but the one we want is uh, Diffuse. Diff, uh, so it stands for Diffuse. That's the color information. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see we've, uh, we've got color right off the bat. So one thing about it is the um, it's kind of large. The the texture is kind of spread out. Just one tile of it is over the entire pig, which is not quite what I'm looking for. So we could change the UV tiling here. So like if we change that to say five, you can see now we've got more of the uh, texture kind of spread out over this thing, right? Um, but the thing is, we're going to end up using that uh, that tiling or we're going to use it end up using a bunch of images one for like the base color one for the specular roughness one for the normal map one for the displacement all that stuff and we, we want the uv tiling to be the same on all of them and we don't want to keep changing it so to do that i'm going to type in uh abs abs like an absolute value and i'm just going to change that to say 10 and hook that up into the uh, uv tiling so uh, that way we can change this one value. Uh, let's change that over to say seven or held two. And you can see it's changing changing the value of that. That way we can change it in one spot later. And it's just there. All right, so next we're just gonna duplicate this uh, tiled image for all of our slots. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna hold down Alt on my keyboard and then drag the, uh, the tiled image node out. And that will make a copy of it and it even gives us the, uh, this connection already. So I'm going to do that another time for the normal and one more time for the displacement. Cool. All right, so let's hook these up. So this next one here is we want to go into uh, specular roughness. And then I want to choose my roughness map, which you can see is here. Rough. Uh, cool. So the next one is the normal map. which uh, by default that's going to make things look all sorts of silly. Um, cool, so the normal map. Uh, with Polyhaven you actually get two of them. So here's Nor, normal. There's a DirectX one and an OpenGL one. Uh, OpenGL is the one we want. So... Oh, sorry. Uh, I've made a mistake. You can see how it's all messed up, uh, or it doesn't look right. We actually need to insert a normal map in between here there we go that's looking better cool so that gives it gives us the surface texture but none of these uh none of these bumps are actually going to displace the geometry up so we'll fix that here in a second um again real quick about that uh that open gl versus uh direct x if you take the direct x it'll actually kind of like invert your textures and things will look kind of weird. So just make sure you get the, uh, the OpenGL version. Cool. 
All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to get the displacement in. So we'll take our image for that and go down and find displacement. So we're going to hook that up, but there's going to be a problem here. So if we zoom out, there's there's a couple things happening here. Um, one of them is it's just displacing way too far, right? Uh, so we can change that in the displacement node. And we'll change the scale down to, I don't know, let's try 0.2. Uh, so one of the problems in the bugs, at least in uh, Houdini 19543, uh, here is that whenever I mess with the displacement output, it doesn't want to refresh the uh, viewport. So you could do a number of things. You could uh, restart the render. You could switch back and forth between Houdini, GL, and Karma, and that those might fix it. Uh, but the easiest way I found to do it is just to cut the line between displacement and output and reconnect it. And then you can see our we've got our new value. Oh, incidentally, you can press Y on your keyboard to change your icon to the scissors. And then click and drag to uh, make a cut. Really handy. All right, so that, that was one of the issues. The other issue is that... We have this weird stretching and it seems like our displacement is like coming out at like an angle, right? Instead of coming straight out of the surface, it's coming out all spiky. Now, the reason for that is that the, um, the displacement node is actually looking for color information and using that as a uh, vector so that you can displace things, not just straight out, but you know, sideways too. And if we look at our, our texture file here for the uh, displacement, you can see it's it's a grayscale image. So if you treat that as vector information, that means we're displacing along all axes, you know, like red goes X, Y, and Z uh, for all of them. So that was one thing that tripped me up for a second. Easy fix though. We just come over to the tiled image, change the signature to uh, float. That way we're just saying, that, no, that's just one value. That's all we're caring about. And again, we'll cut the line and rehook it up and then it'll uh, pop in. Okay, so that's that's looking much more reasonable to me. The um, the displacement height is still too much, so I'm gonna change that to say 0.1 and cut and connect. <laughs> so we'll take it, that works, works for now. Um, so you can see with this, we've actually have our displacement uh, so that our little cracks and stuff actually push the uh, the apparent geometry up, which can be nice for a render. Uh, I will say it slows the rendering down, or at least the loading in for a, a starting frame. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's it. So again, the big things really, um, really were just uh, when you bring in the um, uh, the normal map, just make sure you get the right one. Uh, the GL version, not the DirectX version. And then when you're using the displacement map, set the signature to uh, float. So, yeah. Talk to you guys later.